Hey, good morning, everybody. We're coming to you live from the Davenport Home Studio. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> we want to welcome everybody to the gathering place this morning. We've got a great day in store for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. We're going to worship the Lord together. We're going to take time to hear about what's happening at the gathering place. And we're also going to hear a word from God that I think is going to encourage you today. But before we jump into there, Jules, can you greet us? Yes. Uh, well, welcome to church this morning again in your home. What a beautiful thing it is to see the Word of God house to house. Mm -hmm. It's like the New Testament. Pretty exciting. So, so true. we're glad to be with you, glad to be with your family, and excited to hear what God might say to us today. And He is speaking to us. Hey, I also want to welcome everybody who might be joining us for the first time. In fact, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to connect with you. I, I actually would ask everybody to do this if you would... Uh, text welcome to that number there on your screen and it'll it'll give you some prompts to follow uh, just let us know who you are where yeah. you're coming from we have people from many different states out of our area as well as so many people from our own local church here so we would love to connect with you but I would I would love everybody to do that there today well let's go ahead and get ready to worship you want to crank up the music maybe uh, you know, close your windows, open your windows, do whatever you want to do. Let's fill your house, fill your neighborhood with praise, and let's give God our best. Turn your attention to Katie as she leads us into worship. Good morning, Gathering Place Church. Welcome once again to our home. My name is Katie, and this is Kyle, and we are part of the team here at Gathering Place. And they are going to open us up in some prayer, and we're going to get started worshiping this morning. Hey, God, we are just to be in your presence this morning, and we thank you that you still provide ways for us to meet together as a church and to praise and worship you all together, and we ask 
Hey, welcome back, everybody. What a good time it is to praise the Lord together. We're laughing because we're trying to figure out all these uh, challenges of recording. You know, it's not new. It's not the normal thing for us. Uh, you might think we're professionals, I'm sure, but we clearly are not. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're glad to be in the house with you today. Hey, we got a couple things we're super excited about. Yeah. Something big happened this week for us. Mm -hmm. First time ever in the history of the gathering place. And something really big is coming up. Also, probably a first time ever. Tell Absolutely. us about the what just happened this week. So this week we started our first level one OSL class, Op Operation Solid Lives. So we have 30 students in our first discipleship class. That's amazing. 30 people. And we're not meeting face to face. Nope. But we did see each other's face. And we all logged in. We all got on. And uh, it's been exciting to be able to see what God is doing. I've talked to several people even over the last couple of days that are already being impacted by the word of God. So get ready, man. It's going to be exciting. So true. We're hearing stories of, of life change and that's what Operation Solid Lives is about. It's what discipleship is about. It's about, and that's what following Jesus is about. It is life transformation that takes place. And so uh, we'll have more of those classes coming up soon. Hopefully we can do them in person, but right now we're doing them on Zoom. If you missed out on this one, the start of it, well, Probably in about five more weeks, we'll launch another. So we look forward to that. Also, uh, there are things that we're working on for church beyond just these uh, online gatherings and the discipleship. It's coming up in about two weeks from today, we're really mobilizing our congregation and our community for uh, generosity to serve our, our community. And so tell us a little bit about that. Well, we were asked by um, our city manager, uh, we were on a phone call this week with uh, several different faith communities and uh, community leaders. And we were asked by them to mm -hmm. uh, host at our campuses, at our properties, uh, what they call a uh, stop, pop and drop. Um, the food bank here is asking for certain items. Uh, they're clientele has more than doubled over the last couple of weeks and so they're wanting to be prepared. Uh, we'll get you some more details this week uh, through social media, through emails, um, but what we're going to do in two weeks, we're going to host one at the gathering place right. In, right in our driveway and you'll just drive up, you'll pop your trunk, we'll pull it out and we'll uh, send it over to the local food bank. So we want to be a part of supporting our community and making sure everybody in yeah. our city is well taken care of. So true. So drive through church. That's, That's kind of exactly exciting. What it is. We're going to stop, pop, open up shop and go. <laughs> oh wait, that's a song I think I've heard. So stop, I've pop and drop. You're going to put your food in the back, pull on up, pop your trunk. We'll grab it out. It'll it'll be kind of like a a, a car robbery because you have masked people coming up to your car and taking <laughs> stuff out of it. And so you're going to you're going to actually enjoy it though when they do. And we're going to give away, I think we're going to be giving away free smiles and waves at people. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, uh, speaking of generosity, I am so excited about our church. We're a giving church. We're a generous yeah. church. And even during times like this, we've just seen the faithfulness of the congregation to step up. Uh, many of you have given in, in ways that um, really go above and beyond. And you've just also yeah. been faithful to to tithe and, and regular offerings. And so thank you for that. If you would like to give online today, just follow the prompt on your screen. And I know some of you are watching from out of area and you go to other churches. And so that, that's okay. Give to your local church. Give to your local church. Bring your tithe to your local church. If you give here, we're grateful, but I want your tithe to go to your local church. Don't send us your tithe if you go to another church. Uh, but every, everything that you do right now, for the ministry to advance the gospel, to care for your communities, it's important. So we want to just pray blessing over you, that God would continue to open up the windows of heavens and pour out for you so much that you can't even contain it. That's his promise and that's his word to you today. Well, we're going to get right back into worship with one more song and we're going to declare words of blessing over you and over your family God is faithful. He cares about you. And this is not where your story ends. In fact, for generations to come, they will be impacted because of the blessing of God on you. And so let's once again, open up our hearts, open up our mouths, 
worship the Lord and speak these words of blessing uh, out loud as we sing. Can we do that?
Well, all right, we're about ready to jump into the Word today, so I want to actually do something with you that uh, I've been doing for years, and I learned it when I was at The Rock. It's a good way to start off our time together by grabbing our Bibles, pulling them out, and saying something about this book, because it's not an ordinary book. It's not a comic book. It's not just a history book. It's not just a bunch of stories or maybe some inspiring messages but it really is the Word of God to us. So what I want you to do is grab your Bible, and I'm going to put the words on the screen, but I want you to say this out loud together with me. Would you say this? This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. I want you to go ahead and open in your Bible with me to the book of Psalm chapter 1. And I want to talk about something that I think is so important for us. And it's our next steps. I remember not too many years ago hearing about a man who uh, was really in a dark place. He was a businessman. He is married. Things seemed like they were going well until they weren't. And suddenly his business started to fall apart around him. His marriage started to fall apart around him. And his history, his background was an addict. So he came out of alcoholism, he came out of drug addiction, and he knew at this time that those, those voices, those old habits were calling his name. And he said that he felt the downward spiral and he knew that the likelihood of him uh, ending up back giving in to his addictions was very strong. So instead of just focusing on all the turmoil around him, he really got quiet before the Lord and, and tried to determine, what do I need to do? And because he had some good connections, some good friends, he knew his next step was to reach out to at least five of his close friends and say, hey, will you call me every day or can I call you and just talk? Because he knew he needed some community, some connection, some accountability, and some encouragement. And so he didn't have the long-term plan. He just knew what the next step was. He didn't know how to fix his marriage. He didn't know how to fix his business situation. He didn't know how to do all of those things, but he did know the next step. The next step was for him to reach out to some other people. But that came from going before the Lord and saying, what do I need to do? And he attributes that to his success of seeing a restored marriage, his restored business, and for him to stay out of the old habits and, and not fall back into the, the cycle of addiction. And so what I want to talk to you about is what are your next steps? Because we all find ourselves in a situation where the world has kind of come to a stop in some ways, and many people end up getting anxious. They can get discouraged. They can get depressed. They can get frustrated or angry, and we can just look at the situation on the outside, and it can really bring us to a place where we don't want to be. And so I feel like the Lord is telling us we need to prepare for our next steps, for our next steps. Uh, if you're not careful, you'll end up uh, watching the news all the time, listening to the news, talking to people, and hearing about the bad, the bad news all the time. And uh, I got to tell you this, I'll confess this to you right now, I did something that I... I I hate doing, and I hate when I do it, but this week I spent some time um, reading the news and trying to find out what's going on and, and what's the status as far as opening our economy back up and you know the real uh, health numbers and so forth. But then I started reading into the comment section, and in the comment section, you, found, you find out about the brokenness of humanity. If you ever want to know how ugly and dark people can get, just give them some internet courage to where they can post some ugly stuff and sure enough, they will. And I found myself reading these comments, and, and at first I was kind of shocked and then irritated and, and somewhat uh, angry at what I was reading, and just to see how people would talk to one another and respond and, and uh, mock and you know just be so bitter. And I realized that the Scripture tells us that we don't want to be not only giving in to that behavior ourselves, but we also don't want to sit there and read about it, and listen to it, and talk like that ourselves. And that's why I want us to look in Psalm chapter 1. It's, a, it's the very uh, first verse here that we're going to look at from Psalm chapter 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. 
You notice that there's a progression here. It starts off with the man who's blessed, who doesn't do three things. First of all, walks. He doesn't walk in the path, the counsel of the ungodly. And then he stands and in the path of sinners, nor does he sit in the seat of the scornful. If you end up getting caught up in the environment, the situation around you, what everybody's talking about, you'll go from a forward movement. You'll go from taking the next step to next thing you know, you're just standing there listening. Pretty soon, you plant yourself there. You're seated. That's what God is saying. Don't do this. Don't do that. There's a better alternative for us. Instead, we're to be people of verse 2. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He delights in the word of God. And he's thinking about the word of God. He's listening to the word of God. He's, he's mulling it over on the inside. And the Bible says this about that person, that he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and everything that he does will prosper. See, this is God's desire for you. This is desire for me. And the way to get to that place of fruitfulness and refreshing in our life isn't by the comment section. It isn't by filling our hearts and minds with the news. It isn't by uh, arguing with people about what we should or shouldn't be doing. It's by filling our hearts with the Word of God. It's by meditating on it and thinking about it. And in that, we get the wisdom and the direction from God. We know what the next steps are. And if you find yourself, if you're scrolling through uh, the comment section, you know, Facebook, or, or you're looking at the news constantly, or you're reading these things, you're listening to it, and that's going to create an anxiety, and it'll get you stuck. But the way to get out of that is to get back into the Word and get the Word back into you. And so for us, we want to talk about these next steps. Uh, oftentimes, you find your place your, yourself in a place where you don't know what to do, and then you hear a message like this say, hey, let's plan for the next steps. Well, how do I do that? Do I just get a pen and a paper out and start to you know, write down the next steps and start to take them and, and, and map it out and strategize it? And I'm going to tell you, I don't think that's the, fir the first thing that you need to do. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 16, 9, it says that a man's heart, he plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. The Lord wants to direct your steps. Now, He also wants your heart to do some planning. He wants your heart to do some processing, and He wants you to bring your heart before Him. But He will direct your steps. Uh, he will give you the direction. He'll give you the insight. He'll tell you what to do. And in just a minute, I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about how to do that. But before we even get there, I want to talk about if it even matters what we do next. Hey, I want to take a moment just to have a little conversation. I know I am teaching a message about taking the next steps, but have you ever oh, seen a deer caught in the headlights? And you know that deer wants to get out and move forward and get to safety, but for some reason they just freeze because they find themselves in a situation that before they can act, their mind is trying to process that. That's so true. And, and I think that for many people right now, mm -hmm. they find themselves like a deer caught in the headlights, yeah. knowing that I need to take some next steps, but they're kind of trying to assess where they're at. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit of, about how to do that, mm -hmm. and then maybe even some insight that you have on taking next steps. Awesome. Well, I do believe that we none of us have ever experienced this before. And so you have to give yourself a little bit of margin, a little bit of room to go, okay, wait, what just happened? You know, and I think yeah. that was, I, I want to take next steps and I am uh, definitely one who likes to get going. Mm -hmm. But for a moment, it just took me off guard of what, what was happening in our culture and our community. And in those moments, I think it's so important to just kind of step back and assess and say, okay, I'm not alone. God is with me. Uh, and then begin to be thankful. And I think you mentioned that a little bit today. And that that thankfulness is where you begin to be able to get your your movement back. Mm -hmm. Because then you realize, okay, we're okay. God is with us. And so I think that's one of the tools that I use often. And I think you do too. It's just reminding each other and reminding yourself of the goodness of God. Yeah. And so yeah. that's a big deal. But you're right. I think a lot of people... I know I did for at least for the first week and a half, just kind of felt stuck. Like, what in the world mm -hmm. <laughs> did we just experience? Right. What in the world? And uh, once I got past that, 
I think now moving forward, you know, I've got some projects I believe the Lord has asked me to do over the years that I really haven't had the time to set Mm -hmm. apart and do. And so there's some writing things that I need to address and do. And so may the Lord speak to you this week uh, about your next step. So what are, what does that look like for you? Maybe there's some things that he's addressed in your heart, in your life, maybe in even movement forward in your calling that you just haven't done for, um, you know, lack of, lack of time, lack of priority, but, um, Right. It would, it would, now's the time. Now's yeah. the time to look at those next steps and say, I can do something different now than I've ever done before. So good. So probably all of us have some things that we wish we had time for. And some, sometimes those, those things that we want to take time for requires us to really push everything. It does. Yeah. You know, out, put everything else on the back burner and just focus on this. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, many people have time for that. Absolutely. They do. Yeah. And so what, what would you say, like, how how do we do that? Mm. Like, like how, how are you actually doing that? So I think it takes discipline, and I'm not a naturally self-disciplined person. Um, I'm learning a little bit. I'm trying. But mm-hmm. I, I think how you actually do it is you have to set up your day. What is my day actually going to look like right. today? And have a schedule. Like, write out a schedule. What I need to shower. I need to make my bed. <laughs> I know it's kind of crazy. But, you know, commit to the daily things that are necessary. Commit Wait, to let, doing Let me write things. that down. I need to shower. <laughs> okay. We need to shower, people. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that just helps you get moving, get out the door, and then write those projects down. Lord, what are you speaking? What are you saying to me? Mm-hmm. And um, in what space do I need to do those things? Also, acknowledge the family that you're living with. Making sure you're connecting well with them. Mm-hmm. Have dinner together at night at the table, not in front of the screen, you know, make some priority shifts where you're getting to be with each other. So good. So, and then give each other a break. If you've got small kids, pay attention to your spouse. They're not okay. All right. (laughs) Pay attention to them. Give them a break. Take the kids for a walk. One or the other. Listen, it doesn't matter if it's the mom or the dad, just pay attention and give each other the space that you Mm -hmm. need for health. So good. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, uh, Everybody probably has some things that they can start to write down in addition to showering, but also what is it that God's telling them to do? Let's go ahead and jump right back into the Word as we finish up this message. You know, there's a story in in um, 2 Samuel where David, he just becomes a king, and then he finds out that the Philistines were coming up against him. They're searching for him. They want to they take him out. And so he's sitting there, and, and he's processing this before the Lord, he hears about it. And, you know, David's a fighter. And so his natural inclination would be to fight. His natural inclination would be to go to battle and do what David does because he always experiences victory. He, he always seems to be very skilled and uh, he always comes out on top. And so you think that David, because of who he is, his skills, his abilities, his experience and background, that he would just automatically, you know, know what to do. But this is something about David that I think is so important to realize. And it's the reason why he uh, always walked in victory. He always came out on top. It's there. There's a reason why David experienced the the blessing of the Lord. And this story is actually found in 2 Samuel chapter 5. It says this in verse 19 after it says that David inquired of the Lord. David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up. I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. Listen to this. God said that without a doubt, I'm going to give you the victory. But David, he didn't just assume that. He wasn't presumptuous that it's going to work out. He went and inquired of the Lord and said, Should I even go up? Should I go up to battle? And and of course, the Lord said in this situation, Yes. And so you know what happens? David goes out, he goes to the battle, and uh, it says David defeated them there. David defeated them there. Now you think, okay, well, well that's great. David went and he, he knew what to do. He prayed and, and God told him what to do. And so we get to a couple verses later. It says in verse 22, then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. The Philistines, the same enemy, the ones who didn't die at the last battle, they went up to the same place and they said, well, let's do it again. You know, I think that's interesting because sometimes you'll win a battle and you think that that battle's over and you won't have to fight it again. 
but you might very well find yourself fighting um, that same old enemy in that same old place. And I think about this as believers. We, uh, we oftentimes deal with the same stuff over and over and over again, and that's not your fault all the time. Now, there is some times where you keep getting yourself in trouble, but you know, the enemy, he's persistent. He wants to do whatever it takes to take you out. And you might have won the battle yesterday, but he's coming up against you again today. And you might win it today, but he's going to come up against you tomorrow. And so that's just the nature of the enemy. But we're built for war. We're built for war. And we have a God who's known it as the God of hosts, the Lord of hosts, which is the Lord of armies. And so he's built for war as well. And he'll always lead us into victory. Now, David, when he found himself fighting the same or facing the same enemy in the same place, you think that he would already know what to do and how to do it. You think that he would just say, well, God told me what to do last time. I went up and it worked. Why don't I do the same thing? So clearly David would know what the next step is. However, that's not how David worked. In verse 22, it says they came up, but verse 23 says, then David inquired of the Lord. David went back and inquired of the Lord. And what did the Lord say? He, did, he, he said the uh, exact opposite of what he said last time. He said, do not go up. See, ver earlier in verse 19, he said, go up. But here he said, do not go up. And now this is why it's so important that we present ourselves before the Lord. We make the plans, but we let the Lord direct our steps. If you continue pr to present yourself before the Lord... He's going to direct your steps. God had another plan. Now, God's plan was not hidden from David. God wanted to reveal his plan to him. God will reveal his plan to you, but you've got to inquire of him and find out what do you do. David was known as a man after God's own heart. Sometimes people say, well, that's because he was a worshiper, and, and, and that's probably true. You know, he sings songs and so forth. But I think one of the biggest uh, indicators of why he was a man after God's own heart is because of this right here. He continually went after the heart of God. God, what are you saying? What do you want me to do? I don't know what to do unless you tell me. Sometimes we can get really arrogant and think we know better than God, but we don't. David went and inquired of the Lord and said, do I go up against him? And God said, do not go up. He said, you shall not go up. Instead, circle around behind him and come up, uh, come up in front of the mulberry trees. And listen to this. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. Then the Lord, for then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. Now God tells him, don't go up this way. You go up around and you, ha you sit by the trees. And then you're going to hear the sound of marching on the top of the trees. What does the sound of marching in the top of the trees sound like? I mean, was that a common thing? I don't think so. He's telling him, you're going to experience something that's supernatural right now. You're going to hear really the, the armies of the Lord marching uh, above you, around you. You're not going to see him. It's going to be like the sound of this marching in the trees. And when you hear that, when the Lord goes before you, then you advance quickly. And the Bible says this, that David did so. Verse 25, and the Lord, as the Lord commanded him, and he drove back the, the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. Now, Gezer is where, you know, the, the senior citizens lived. And so he drove back the Philistines all the way back to, to Gezer. Okay, well, that might not be true. I don't know. But nevertheless, he did have the victory there and the Lord fought for him. The key here was not that David went out. The key here is not that he went out behind or in front the first time. The key here is that he went before the Lord and the Lord told him what to do. God will tell you what to do. He'll tell you what the next steps are. You've got to be like David to A, come to him and B, hear him and C, do what he said, right? Come, hear, do. It's a very common principle throughout the scripture. It's the way Christianity works. And so it does matter to God what step we take. You remember when Jesus uh, was about to ascend to heaven, he told his disciples who he had, he had been with for three and a half years, plus others, and who had also seen him resurrected from the dead in person. He didn't tell them, hey, you guys just figured out, you know what to do, you've been with me before. He said, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that my father's promised you. He knew that what their experience had 
given them and taught them was not enough. He knew that their, their zeal was not enough. They needed the Holy Spirit to be able to accomplish what God wanted to, them to accomplish. But not only that, it wasn't only about accomplishing. The whole point of the cross and the resurrection was so that the, the, the temple of God, we could become the temple of God. We can dwell with God, His presence with us, so that we would be filled with His Spirit. God is saying, I want to, I want to dwell with man again. And so Jesus is saying, don't get things out of order and don't rush out uh, and rush off to do what you think you should do because you're going to miss it. You're going to think that you know, but you're going to miss out on what I have for you and what I want to do in your life. And so the, the disciples, they began to pray and they went up to the upper room and they prayed and they prayed and they continued there until something happened that they had never experienced before. And it was a supernatural move of God. It was, it was a, the work of God where they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is the pattern for believers today. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit as well. You've got to, you've got to be filled with the Spirit so that a couple things. One is there is that, that intimate connection with the Lord. And also there is that empowerment and boldness and courage and strength and ability that comes from being filled with the Spirit that He gives you so that you can do the next steps. So maybe even for you, the next step is just to simply get before the Lord and be filled with the Spirit. So let's, let's ask this question here, because I think it's so common for people. What do I do if I don't know what to do? What do I do? Pastor Daniel, you're saying, hey, hear from God, plan your next steps, take your next step. What do I do if I don't know what to do? Maybe you're praying, maybe you're, you're waiting, but you don't have clarity. And, and by the way, I find a lot of people get stuck right here and they just say, I'm waiting on God, so they don't do anything. They don't know what to do, they, so they don't do anything, and they just use the excuse, I'm waiting on God. Well, I think that waiting on God is, is super important. And I also, as I mentioned, I think you don't want to head off into the wrong direction. But there are some things that will probably help you with this. Uh, number one is Psalm 119, verse 105. The scripture says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. David said this about God's word. Now imagine this. He's saying, Your word is a lamp to my feet. Now they didn't have phones with flashlights or, you know, these LED light bulbs or anything. They, they didn't have electricity. And so, so think about this. They're going down a maybe rocky, narrow path, and it's dark outside. And so what do they have? They would put these little lanterns on their feet, little tiny ones that would go on each foot. And what, what does that do? That's a lamp on their foot, but it illuminates their steps, their path. But here's the deal. It doesn't light up the entire path. They don't know, they're not able to see every step of the way. They're only able to see the next step and then the next step. And so Psalm 109 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What he's saying is, God, when, when I'm in your word, it illuminates my pathway right here. It, it shows me what the next step is. And so don't sit there and just say, I'm waiting for God to reveal the next step. Get in his word, allow his word to be attached to your feet, so to speak, so that you can at least see what the next step is. And once you spend time in the word, you're going to find that uh, you got a lot of steps that are very clear to you. For example, I think about this, and, and maybe this is the next step for you. Uh, and this could be a next step for, for any of us and all of us because it's found right in the Word. And, it, and it's in Luke chapter 17. Maybe you remember this story. Jesus is walking and he's outside in Samaria and, and he comes across 10 people, 10 men who were, had leprosy. They had, they had leprosy. And when you had leprosy, you were quarantined. You were set aside. You couldn't be around other people. And if other people would come anywhere near you, you would have to cover your mouth and you'd have to yell out something like, unclean, unclean, like you're warning them, don't come by me. I am infected. I'm contagious. I am cut off from all social interaction. I'm cut off, you know, I'm un unhealthy. 
And so they're in a terrible situation. They're, they're cut off from their families. They're cut off from being able to produce anything. They're cut off from being able to worship in the temple and with, with others. So they're very isolated. And Jesus comes across them and they see him and they all begin to lift their voice and they say, Master, Master, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. And, and Jesus tells them, he says, go and show yourself to the priest, which would have been something from the Old Testament law when somebody is cured or healed of leprosy that they're supposed to go to the priest for confirmation. Well, they still had leprosy. And God, Jesus said, go and present yourself to the priest. And the Bible says that on their way, they were, they were cleansed. On their way, they were cleansed. But one of those 10, when he realized that, he came back. And he, he fell on his face and, and lifted up his voice and he glorified God. And, and he, he told Jesus how thankful he was to him. And he began to give thanks to him for healing him. And Jesus said, go your way for your faith has made you whole. Go your way for your faith has made you whole. But then he said this. He said, weren't there 10 of you? Why is it that only one person came back? How is it that only one came back? And, and all of you were so cut off, you were having such a hard time, and I showed up in your life, I did something tremendous, and only one came back. Why is that? I think that we can see from the scripture right here that uh, maybe a next step for all of us is to give thanks, just to give outrageous thanks to God. You might be in a situation that's tough right now, but start to identify the things God has done the way he's protected you, saved you, healed you, delivered you, provided for you, the people he's brought in your life, the clothes on your back, the, the, the roof over your head, the car you drive, the shoes you have. I mean, you start to go through experiences and you give God thanks. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to be built up on the inside and you're going to be made whole. You're going to be made whole. I remember uh, not too many years ago, we found ourselves in a situation where, well, it was right during the Great Recession of 2008, and sometime after that, we had a house that we had moved out of, and we were uh, down in Southern California, but our house that we moved out of didn't sell before we left, kept trying to sell it. We're chasing the market down. I get a renter in there, and then the renter is doing okay, but then she decides and, and tells me, I'm not going to pay you anymore. Knowing the financial difficulty I was in, she knew that the likelihood of me taking any action was very slim. And I remember just the frustration, the stress, the bitterness. I'm paying rent. I'm paying a mortgage. Uh, things aren't looking good financially. And I was waking up at night and having a hard time, you know, just keeping my mind, it, it, the joy of the Lord and my mind in the right place. I remember one night in the middle of the night I woke up and I just felt like, you know what, I've got to give God thanks for, for all of the things that he's done. And I started to give God thanks that I, that I even had a house, that we were able to buy a brand new house and we lived there and some of our kids were born there. And, you know, the great experiences, the neighbors we had, I started to give God thanks for all those times that I could think of where he just showed up and did great things and we were able to open our home up and, and welcome people in. I started to give God thanks that I was even a, a homeowner I gave God thanks that I was even a landlord for a little while. I gave God thanks that he even brought that renter to me for that time period. And I began to speak blessing and life over her. And you know what? After about 15 to 20 minutes in the middle of the night there, whatever heaviness I had and stress and anxiety, it broke. It, it just came off of me. And I went back to sleep. I slept so good. But I never had another moment of stress over that. And I'm telling you, it's because it's, it works when you thank God and you put him first and you set your mind on him and you just do what the scripture says. You might not have some um, grand revelation uh, that no one ever heard before or you know, a strategy for your life. But if you just simply do what the scripture says in little ways like giving thanks or being generous or serving others or praying or worshiping or forgiving or humbling yourself... If you just do those things, you know what? I really do believe that Jesus is going to do two things. One, he'll tell you, you're made whole. He, he will make you whole. But the other aspect is he'll tell you what the next step is. And, and what benefit does it do you if you know three steps from now, but you don't know the first two steps? And so really, we need to take the first two steps. And for you personally, I want to pray that God would give you some wisdom and direction on exactly what those steps are. But let me take time to pray with you right now 
that you would know what to do, that God would reveal to you what your next step is. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that uh, you are a God that is always moving us forward, that nobody should be stuck, left behind, that whatever situation we're in, it's not the end for us. Lord, for those who are feeling overwhelmed or anxious or, or angry or frustrated, I pray that the God of all peace would, would guard their hearts and minds as they give thanks, Lord. I thank you that you give them uh, clear direction, know what they can do, where they're at. Even if they're stuck in their house, there's still things they can do. There's still next steps. Reveal that to them. Lord, I thank you for blessing your people. If G Jesus, if there's anybody here who doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray right now that they would repent, that they would turn their hearts back to you, that they would surrender their lives and, and um, receive you as their Lord and Savior. And people, as you're listening to this right now, uh, maybe that's you. Maybe you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to invite you to do exactly what I just said and prayed about is that you would repent, that you would turn your heart to God, that you would ask for forgiveness and you would give him your whole life. You do that, say it in your own words, and I pray that, that, um, that your heart would be open to him today. Well, that's all I have for you today. We're going to uh, hear a little bit more about what's going on at the gathering place. Also, I want to invite you to our meet and greet in our Zoom chat room. That's coming up right after this. You can see the link there in the show notes as well as in the chat to my left or my right. I don't know what side it is on your screen, but I can't wait to be back with you next week. God bless you. Have a great week.